Happy Wednesday, my savvy service providers scaling to 10K months. I am so glad to be here. I can't believe we are in Q4 talking about holiday sales and Black Friday right now. Like, I feel like January was yesterday, but here we are. And I preface this conversation with, you know, the fact that like, I feel like I have a very different opinion about holiday sales and Black Friday. And I honestly believe it's detrimental to some businesses and to their high ticket offer. So this is a conversation that I am having behind the scenes with my clients all the time. So I really wanted to bring that here. And like, if I know, you know, I know that if I'm talking to my clients about it, then this is something we need to talk about here in the group, because I honestly truly do not believe that holiday sales or a Black Friday offer is right for everyone. And so we are going to talk about questions to ask yourself to really determine if that is a fit for you and then what you can do instead to really create consistent cash all year because Black Friday, like, yes, you could make a few extra bucks, but you might be like doing detrimental harm to your high ticket offer and actually the longevity of like your clients and cash that you can book. So really want you to be intentional with your Black Friday offer, whether you offer one or not. And then we'll go over, I think it's three strategies I have for you to really use all year long that yes, they work during Black Friday and holiday sales, but they'll just really support you every single month to book clients and make consistent cash instead of just trying to scramble for a few extra bucks this time of year, because y'all know I'm not about that. Let me pull myself up in the group. Since we are talking about holiday, you know, holiday sales and stuff, it feels very important to talk about um, year end giving because I know around Black Friday, there's also like Giving Tuesday. And so that's something that like I really want to bring here in light of the hurricanes in light of um, everything that's happened here in the Southeast just in the past month has been insane. And so, yes, you know, it's so great. All the resources and money that have been brought in to organizations to help people literally get like just basic supplies. But I'm in Charleston, South Carolina, and, you know, it, this brings up a lot of um, stories and, you know, people like 35 years ago that were here for Hugo and literally lost everything. And they were talking about just how like great those initial supplies were, but then they literally had to like replace everything that they owned. And so just thinking about that, you know, obviously it's your money do what you want with it, but um, really thinking about those people who need to replace everything. And so when we are talking about allocating cash and giving, you know, year end giving, like really again, do what you want with your money, but really thinking about the people who literally lost everything and have to replace everything. So that's just a reminder, you know, just thinking about this time of year um, and Giving Tuesday. So we'll do a couple of housekeeping if you join live or catch the replay. And let me make sure I pulled it up. Okay, I'm live. Um, if you join live or catch the replay, say hi, ask your questions. This is going to be so supportive for you, especially if you show up and, you know, just bring what you're going through and ask questions and just this is free support for you. Um, I'm giving away my training, how I made 239K with a small audience. This is something I created last year and I don't have it out there and available anymore, but this is something that like I see to be like such a thing in the online space is people like chasing more followers and a bigger audience. And it's really like, you need to be able to convert the people in front of you. You do not need a like humongous audience. Like, let me close my door. Um, like I talked about, I made 239K and I think at the time I had like 500 Instagram followers, like there were maybe 400 people in this group. Like I had a tiny, tiny following. And so I know that this training is gonna be super supportive. So we'll announce the winner on Friday. Be sure to say hi and leave a comment to you know get entered to win that. And now that we are in um, Q4, I'm opening up some of my free sold out strategy sessions. So these are free one-to-one -one coaching sessions. I'll put the link below after this, but you get my eyes and brain on your business. This is like, if you have not gotten the results you want this year, gift yourself one of these free calls because there is a gap, there's a leak, there's something going on in your sales process that is not working. And this 30 minutes of free support is going to help you really identify what that is. And we'll even create action steps that you can take and walk away with and make changes like this week from. I know I've had people report back to me after one of these calls and say they've booked clients. Like it is wild. And this is 
free one one support. I love offering these when I can. I do run a fully booked roster and schedule, so I can't offer these all the time, but I'm rolling some out um, or finishing up October. So definitely look for booking November and what I can offer in December, because if you want to make 2025 your best year ever, like get this support now. Like this is what you need to really get the results that you want to start seeing in January because it takes hi rebecca thank you so much for joining so good to see you it really takes 30 60 90 days to see your actions really start creating results and so again book one of my sold out set strategy sessions because we are going to audit your sales process find the gaps find the leaks what we really need to either do to attract best fit leads or to be able to convert the leads you already have like in this you can take it and roll with it like immediately and start seeing those results so that 2025 is your best year yet so let's go ahead and dive into the conversation i'll drop the link for those sold out strategy sessions after this but rebecca let me know if you have questions along the way this is going to be like for you like you get one-to-one -one support here so throw all your questions and comments at me. So the first thing I wanna talk about, we are gonna talk about the questions and what I'm going over with my one-to-one -one clients to see is a Black Friday or holiday sale really the best thing for their business? And then we're gonna cover three strategies you can use every single month all year long to create consistent cash. But the first thing I wanna bring here, this could be its own live stream itself, but I'll just quickly touch on it is really feeling like, do you feel like a Black Friday offer is something you need because everyone sells at this time of year and you just need that permission? So this is something I see all the time with business owners. They feel so uncomfortable selling. They feel so uncomfortable promoting their offer. And Black Friday is almost like a hall pass. It's almost like, well, everyone sells this time of year. Like, of course I can sell. And that's something that like, I really want you to think about. Like if you're thinking about offering a Black Friday or a holiday offer, is it because of this? Is it because it just feels like this is the time of year that I feel like it's okay to sell and I can actually give myself permission? Or is it because it makes literal strategic sense in your business? So that's just something I really want you to like bring here. Like I sell all year long. I feel so good about selling because I know that my services literally get people transformations. It literally helps my clients 6x, 7x, 10x their revenue. It gets them more dollars in their bank account and I love that. So I know if I'm not selling, then like people aren't getting those results. So really look at your services. How do you feel about selling? How do you feel like showing up? Or how do you feel about showing up and promoting your offer and like shouting it from the rooftops that your offer is like the best thing since sliced bread? Like we need to have that kind of energy and be in that place all year long and not just wait until the holidays to feel like we have permission to roll out our offer and sell it. Um, so journal prompt for you, cause you know I love a journal prompt, but like, do you have that belief that this is the only time of year you can sell? Are you really sold on yourself? Because it is so hard to book clients. No one is going to like sell you on your offer more than you need to be sold on it. So really think about that. Do some journaling around, and, around it, hook into that like, why is your thing the best place someone can spend their money and how is it even a disservice for them to buy from someone else and not you so really ground into that belief um, and then we're going to be talking about do you need a black friday offer does this make sense with your strategy like even though everyone else is doing it i feel like every other coach online is like now's the time to roll out you know think about your holiday offer and your black friday offer every virtual assistant, every OBM, every every other like business related service provider is like, let's plan this out. And I'm sitting here like, skirt, I don't know that this is the right thing for your business. And I know that this is a very unpopular opinion, but I see this behind the scenes with my clients all the time. Um, and honestly, like doing something because you feel pressure to is not the way that multi six and multi seven figure businesses run their business. Like they are not doing things because everyone else is doing it. They are doing things in their business because it makes strategic strategic sense for their business. It's because it's part of their long-term plan and strategy. Like if you're here, I am interested in you making money for years and years to come, as long as you want to. I am not interested in you making a quick buck and then setting yourself three steps back because you rolled out a holiday offer. Like 
This is the conversation. I want you to look at the bigger picture of your business. So that is what we're asking today. Like, please do not look at what everyone else is doing. Like there is so much noise out there this time of year. Please ask yourself, does this make sense for my business? Does this make sense for my sales process? Does this make sense for my long-term goals and the clients that I want to book and the cash I want to make? Like we have got to ask yourself, we have got to ask you, we've got to ask that question. Um, so if you are selling high ticket and you have limited capacity, it typically doesn't make sense to offer a deep discount. Um, I'll use myself as an example. Like I only work between the hours of like nine to two. I'll do client boxer support early in the morning, sometimes in the evening, but like I work a very limited schedule. I work while my kids are at school. So I only have a certain capacity. Like I am capped at a certain number of clients and then that's it. So it doesn't make sense for me to just do a deep discount when I literally like that could be a person that like is taking a spot from someone else. So I just don't have the capacity to like offer big discounts and then let people like come in from that because of that discount. So really look at that in your business. Um, I think of a client example, like her prices weren't where we wanted them to be. I can actually think of multiple clients in this position where they are pivoting from low ticket to high ticket, whether it's, and it's typically like we're creating a new offer and then we're stacking like higher tickets on top of that. So she wasn't where she wanted to be with her prices. They weren't high enough yet. She already thought like she was giving away too much. So it made zero sense to offer a Black Friday sale because she already felt energetically like I'm not getting paid enough, so she was gonna be even more resentful if she's discounting that even more. I had a conversation with a client in Boxer today. She's rolling out an offer in December, so she's gonna be promoting it before, you know, in, during the holidays, like during the Black Friday rush. And she was like, I already feel like I'm giving away so much, so we just can't make a holiday sale and discount it even more, especially because this offer she's creating is an upsell into something else. So for the long term, like sales process and journey that a client goes through, if she discounts this first step, like so much so that a she doesn't feel like she's getting paid enough and then b going from that offer to her next one is such a huge jump for her people. Like it just doesn't strategically make sense. Like if they're getting this first step at such a discount, like yes, it might bring in more people, but if there's a huge disparity between the next offer that she really wants them in, that is really the money maker in her business, it makes zero sense to have this humongous discrepancy. So we wanna keep this lower ticket, like intro offer a little bit higher so that people aren't like totally flabbergasted when they see the price of the next step up. So let me know if that makes sense. Let me know if that's landing with you. So if you're a high ticket service provider and you only have like 20 spots available, like you don't want a deep discount half of those spots for the holidays. Like it just doesn't make sense. Um, especially like my clients stay with me for years. And so I would really be like setting myself up for years to come of like a deep discount or potentially just setting myself back. And then if you're looking at like your intro offer, because so many of the offers around the holidays are like an intro offer to something else that's a stepping stone for someone to take in a sales process or a client journey. And if there's just a huge disparity, like if I'm getting in at $37 for this offer and then the next thing that they're selling me on is like $1,500, like that makes it, it's not congruent. Like I'm gonna have a hard time going from this $37, $37 offer to $1,500 offer. So really keep your pricing congruent with the level so that it's not like this huge jump and people aren't like <gasps> heart attack when I see the next upsell. So let me know if that's landing. Let me know if you have any questions. I wrote down some notes around why it could actually hurt you to offer these deep discounts. Um, like we kind of talked about the questions to ask in your business and what to think about with your strategy. But I really want you to see that like you could actually attract the wrong types of clients. Like by really offering a discount on your services, you might attract like, I hate to call them bargain hunters, but that just might be the case. Um, or you might attract people who just aren't all in on your offer. Like they're getting it for a discount and so they're not really showing up. They're not really doing the work. 
Um, we want people who are like bought in and showing up, especially as a high ticket service provider. Like we don't have a magic wand, you know, like we're co-creating with our clients, whether it's something with their health and fitness journey or whether it's something in their business or something in their per personal life. Like we are not done for you. We're not the hands in their life or their business. We are literally like doing this together with them. And so if you are offering a huge discount this time of year, then you might be inviting people in who aren't gonna show up, who aren't gonna do the work because they got it at a discount. So that's just something to think about because that creates less results. You know, if they aren't showing up and they aren't like fully bought into your offer, then they're probably gonna be as a little dissatisfied or they're not gonna get great results. They're not gonna have a great experience. So we really want to think and make sure we're inviting the right people in who are all in, who are sold on you, who are all in on the work. Um, because that's gonna be the people who stay with you the longest and get the best results. Um, it also can devalue your expertise. So it can send the message that your services aren't worth the original price, or you may train people to just buy from you during the holiday season because they've come to expect the discount. Like, I'll raise my hand, like I do this with my kids' clothing. Like, I'm buying their winter clothes like when it's on deep discount a certain time of year. And other than that, like I'm not buying their clothes from these certain brands. Like these are brands that I love. They offer amazing clothes and they last for a long time. But otherwise I'm kind of like, ah, they're going to grow out of it. I'm just going to go to Target. But during these certain times of the year, I'm willing to buy from these brands. And so that's just something they've trained me to do. Like I'm like looking at pants, you know, in you know, a certain time of year versus their holiday seat sale time of year. And I'm just like, I'm not willing to pay double because it's like this time of year, like I'm waiting for the sale. Um, so just really think about that and your offer. And, you know, is it worth to have that um, discount? It also can undermine your messaging and your positioning. So high ticket is typically associated with high touch done with you, concierge, VIP, like if you're high ticket, you are like there with someone. Again, like in their back pocket, like whether it's their health journey, fitness journey, losing weight, you know, getting healthy in their business, making money, whatever it is, like if you're selling high ticket, you are very hands-on. And if you discount that and you have a bunch of people come in at that discount rate, you just can't provide as great of a service. They won't get as great of an experience because you, the service provider, are spread too thin with all these deep discounted clients. And so you're not even able to give the VIP or the concierge service that you promise in your messaging. So those are just three things to think about that like, you know, does it match your strategy? Does it match your client journey? And then also looking at the people that it might bring in who are not as great of a fit or don't value your work. So we will move on to the three strategies to really support you to create consistent cash all year long. So these three strategies just fundamentally work. Like we see them all the time during Black Friday, um, but you can use these all year long. And this isn't to like trick anyone or like, you know, make them do something they don't want to do. This is just something to support someone to get off the fence. Like we are really bad, you know, humans are really bad at parting with our money. And so it can be hard for us to get what we want because we just can't like get over the fence or give ourselves that permission. So these are a few tools that you can use if you're really seeing someone any time of the year, like have a hard time give themselves permission or get over the fence. So um, again, throw your questions and comments at me. Um, the first one, um, the biggest like indicator of Black Friday success is to show up all year long and like it, it's these black friday sales work because people are familiar with the brand all year because they've built relationships like even the pants that i only buy once a year i love those pants like they last for years i am sold on them we have previous experience with the brand like i have built a relationship with them and so i'm willing to purchase from them at black friday because of this there's like 50 other, I don't know, 500 other brands that are probably just as good, but I don't have experience with them to know, and so I'm not gonna buy from them. And so this is when it is so important to focus on relationships all year long, because especially this time of year, like we have so much noise in our face. Like I just have to like be selfish with my time and my attention because I can't literally give it away to like 
every person who has a deal. So the people that I have relationships with are the ones that I'm gonna pay the smidgest bit of attention to. And not even everyone that I have a relationship with. Like, it's gonna be very focused um, with who I wanna give my time and attention and money to. So really think about this all year long. You need to show up. You need to build those relationships all year long. I talk to my clients about those two things running together, like client delivery, client service, and your marketing. Like these need to be things that happen every single day in your business. Like you need to be marketing, taking a sales action every single day in addition to your client support. And yes, that can be tricky, that can be hard. Like, but we've got to make those things live together. We've got to make the marketing and the sales a non-negotiable, just like brushing your teeth every day or supporting your clients, because otherwise you're gonna get in this feast or famine where all you're doing is client service and delivery, and then you don't, you know, those clients might end or they might complete and then people drop off, and then you've gotta do all the marketing to kind of get that back up. So you really wanna think of these things living together and building relationships all year long showing up like i show up here every wednesday you can count on me come hell or high water i mean if a kid's homesick or powers out like obviously i will not be here but i block this off i do not have clients during this time i prep for this every week like i show up and that is something we just got to create in our business because if you are a high ticket service provider people need so many more touch points before they buy from you like if you offer just like a 37 dollars item they don't need all that relationship building and all those touch points but if you offer a 500 1500 ten thousand dollar offer people just need to get to know you and building that relationship and showing up every day just builds so much trust and it helps people get to know you and that's who people buy from people buy from someone that they know um, people buy from from someone that they've had a good experience with like there are so many studies and i've probably talked about this before but you can have two products that are so similar and like, you know, product A may actually be better than product B, but if someone has a relationship with product B, they're gonna buy that one. And so that is something to think about, like your relationships matter. And that's why kind of what I touch on in my, um, how I made 239K with a small audience is because I focus on relationships and that's just what comes naturally to me. Like I love relationships. I love being here and being here for y'all and getting to know you. Like it lights me up and I love it. And if you're a business owner, you've got to think about marketing, not as just something to like check off your list and not something that you just have to do every day, but literally like these are humans. Like I have to build a relationship with them, like get excited about that because that's when it's like so easy to just show up all year long because you think of it as relationships and not just like a marketing to do that needs to like be checked off. So. I feel like I've harped on that enough, <laughs> but relationships, building relationships all year long, that is gonna help you create consistent cash every month. Mm. All right, so this other reason Black Friday is such a thing is because of the urgency discount. So these are the limited time offers. These create FOMO. Our brains aren't great at making decisions, even we for something we want and have the money for. So if we're on the fence, like, We'll just sit there all day long, but having these urgency discounts are what help people get off the fence. Like if there was like, um, I just got some stuff from my office, like grounding, a grounding mat. Um, <laughs> anyway, I'm really excited about it. It's like you, it's like having your feet connected to the earth because like all the stuff in our environment, anyway, I won't get into it, but having that discount and that urgency discount was what got me over the fence. I'll just be honest, like I'll use myself as an example, like we are simple like that. And so having urgency discounts throughout the year for your offer is what's gonna help someone get off the fence. Um, and I have urgency discounts in my business because I just literally have limited capacity. Like that is the urgency discount. Like I'm offering my free sold out strategy sessions. I only offer like two a week on certain weeks, not even every week. So like there's urgency around that because I literally don't have the time in my schedule to offer them all the time. My one-to-one -one spots, 57% of my one-to-one -one clients have been with me for over two years. I don't have tons of these spots. Like I go deep with my clients. I give them all of my time and attention, not all my time, but like they get all of me. And so I really keep that roster small and there's not much turnover. So that is an urgency. Like 
indicator too, like because there's just literally not the spots in the space. So think about that in your business. Do you literally have an urgency um, like discount because you just don't have the space or the capacity to have unlimited? Like that is an urgency thing for someone. Um, also, you've got to make it like legit. Like you can't just make it like a fake urgency discount because then you will lose trust with your audience. People will lose trust in your business. So really make sure like if you say you're going to close the cart on a certain day, make sure you close the cart on that day. Because otherwise, if you keep it open, people are like, well, damn, I thought she was going to close the cart on Wednesday, but now she's keeping it up until Friday. So like, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't really trust her anymore. Like you can lose so much trust. Um, even if you're like, oh, I want to keep it open for a couple more days because I just want to get those last people in. But like, you will lose so much trust with the people who bought from you thinking it was on Wednesday. So make sure those urgency discounts or the urgency thing to get them over the fence is legit that you follow through. Um, I also raised my prices a couple years ago. So before I raised my prices, I was talking about you can go ahead and book in at this lower rate and lock that rate in because I'm raising prices in January of whatever year that was. I don't even remember. I think it was 2022, but like, feels like yesterday. Um, but that was an urgency discount. Like that was an urgency thing because I was literally raising my rates in January. So I did. I raised my rates in January. Whereas if I didn't, people who had, you know, locked in at the lower rate would have been like, well, damn, like I don't trust her. And so really make sure like, I love talking to clients about this all the time because of course I'm working with my clients to pivot to high ticker offer. So that is part of the urgency we get to create is like, hey, I'm only gonna take three more clients at this rate and then I'm gonna up it. Or after five more clients, I'm closing this down and it's not opening again till in the summer. Like those are urgency discounts too. Like I don't know discount is the right word, but those are urgency markers too, to really think about using those. Like if you're gonna raise your rates, like hey, go ahead and promote that you only have a few spots left at this rate. Or hey, I'm raising rates in January. Or hey, once this thing is full, I don't know when another spot's gonna open up. Like use those as urgency indicators because that is gonna help you and you can use that all year long. Um, I go, I close my business for the month of July and take my girls to the mountains. So that's kind of an urgency thing too. Like, hey, do you wanna get on my calendar before I close for the month? Like that's the thing and so use those like times off or price increases or capacity like use those urgency pieces to really support you in your business um okay so again the urgency works so well because we're so bad at parting with money and again it's like we're not trying to trick anyone we're just helping their brain see that like they might miss out like it's that fomo piece like once you're fully booked there's no spots until someone leaves or once you raise your rates, like that person missed out on that lower rate. So we're not tricking anyone. We're just literally telling them like, you're gonna miss out on this. And so like really helping them have that motivation. Like if it's a limited time offer or they're gonna miss out or they might like not be able to enroll for however many months, like use that to help them because they wanna get, with, they wanna get results. They want to solve a problem. And so by you, giving them those literal real urgency things that's just going to help them get over the fence so that they can solve their problems so that they can get the results they want so an example um so emphasis for the urgency discount is on scarcity or time limitations so this is when you see black friday or literally any time of the year that you can use this like 50 percent off for the next hours only or $500 off if you buy before midnight. Like I have clients who offer webinars and then they upsell into something else. And so they're literally giving, you know, a dollar or percent off within a certain time frame. or, hey, I've got five spots left at this rate, or I've got two months left at this rate and then I raise prices. Like use these urgency discounts, like honestly, as often as you can, that is legit. Um, Obviously, we're, again, we're talking about being an in integrity and not losing trust with your audience, but just think about the natural things you're doing in your business. Like, hey, I'm getting full or hey, I'm going to raise rates. Like anytime you've got that, that's an opportunity to like use that in your marketing. All right. Mm. The third strategy is loss aversion. And this means we are so much more likely to buy to avoid a loss than to gain something. Um, 
So this is what your client would lose by not taking action. So either it's a limited time offer, an exclusive benefit, like an extra session with you, or you know, extra collateral or freebies um, or future savings. Like you're giving them a decision so that they avoid a future loss rather than just focusing on the gain. So this can create like motivation for buyers to make a decision faster. Um, I think of my mom. My mom is a great example of this. We were, they were at Isla Palms last weekend and I had asked her beforehand, like I knew she had all these bags. I was like, mom, can you bring some bags um, for my girls to put in their backpacks with like little supplies that we want to make for them. Um, so she brought all these bags down and she's like, oh, I have dozens of these because every time I bought makeup from Clinique, Estee Lauder, I always waited until they had the bag and then I wanted to get the makeup with the bag. Like she did not want to miss out on this freaking makeup bag that she now has way more than she needs. And so this was just like, oh my gosh, loss aversion works so well because it's a makeup bag she didn't need, but she did not want to miss out on that. And that's what loss aversion does. It's not so much as like she was buying the makeup to have the makeup, but she was buying it then so that she didn't miss out on the bag. So really think about that in your marketing and in your business and really getting strategic about that. So again, some of my clients use this. They're like, I don't want to discount my offer. It doesn't make sense to lower my rate. So that's when it's like, okay, for this amount of time, I'm going to give you an extra session. Or for this amount of time, I'm going to, you know, give you these free things that normally I sell. Like we can play with that. Let me know if you have questions or comments and we could like specifically give examples in your business. Um, so really it's like you're missing out on something. Um, I'm trying to think like what other, cause loss aversion and urgency discounts can kind of seem very similar. Um, so I always think to, like to think about the loss aversion as what, it, what are they gonna miss out on because we do not want to miss out on things. So like it could be missing out on a thousand dollars of savings or don't lose, you know, miss out on getting this thing for free. Um, I have a few clients who do giveaways, like when they do a launch and people join their program, like they do a special giveaway and they promote that as like, don't miss out on this. And like, people love it. Like people eat it up. And it's like the simplest little thing. It's like a, I think for one of them, it's like a $19 thing, but it adds thousands of dollars to her launch because people don't wanna miss out on that. So that is just a great example. Um, so I also like asked, <laughs> I did ask ChatGPT. I'm like, ChatGPT, tell me the difference between like urgency discount and loss aversion because they are similar, but, and this is not like it matters hugely for your marketing because you can use them without like knowing exactly which one you're using, but really think about urgency discounts focus on um, immediate gain. Like you get a discount if you act right now, whereas loss aversion is like the fear of losing the opportunity or the money or the benefit. Um, you can also think about urgency discounts. They trigger excitement and they trigger FOMO whereas loss aversion triggers more of a fear of missing out on something valuable. So again, like it, it's not like you need to know, like I'm using loss aversion versus I'm using urgency discount, but you can kind of see like you get to use both of them um, regularly through the year for your business. So um, let me know if you have any questions, but if you're feeling like you don't know if a Black Friday deal is part of your overall strategy or you don't know what the client journey is and those stepping stones or you don't know what the pricing should be when those stepping stones or you don't understand like your marketing and your messaging and you feel like it's not bringing in the right fit leads or you don't know how to convert the leads and the audience that you have that is when you want to book one of my sold out strategy sessions like i literally called out sold out strategy session because we can touch so many different things in this call and this is time for you this is something that is just very um, particular for you and like personalized personalized is the word I was looking for I've had people give me feedback that they were like I cannot believe how personalized these were like you know they are used to getting more of like a generalized template or copy paste or like here's the six things you need to do but I've had people email me back and be like holy shit you know me you know my business we really covered some ground here like that was the most in-depth anyone has ever gone with me in my business for free. So gift yourself one of these free sessions because they do fill up fast. Urgency here, I do not have a lot of time. I do not have a lot of open spots on my calendar. So be sure you grab one of my sold out strategy sessions because we can literally 
plug the leak in your funnel. Like, where are you leaking? What is happening? What's the problem we need to solve? And give you simple steps and tweaks that you can use now. So I cannot wait to support you on one of these. Again, I'll put the link below. Be sure to grab your spot. I'll be back next week. Let me know if you have questions in the meantime and have a beautiful day. Bye.